going on, everyone? This is Mitchell with SC Weather. I hope you all been having a great day. It's been very cold, very breezy. Uh, a lot of areas are actually seeing snow showers in the Ohio Valley, all the way into the mountains of North Carolina, Virginia, and Tennessee. So um, definitely a uh, not super uncommon. I know it happens. Uh, seems like it happens every year, but we get a late season cold blast. Uh, sometimes it even gets cold into early May even in areas in the south, but um, you know, this isn't totally uncommon. Uh, cold front has completely sweeped the east coast, so we're going to be dealing with cold temperatures, uh, below average temperatures over the next few days before we start to moderate temperature-wise into next week. So we're going to talk about how cold we can get, um, areas that you really need to watch out for for a deep freeze, for an uncommon deep freeze for this time of the year. Lots of areas are under freeze warnings, and uh, it's just going to be downright chilly the next couple of days. Um, you know, it's going to be under bright sunny skies, very windy and breezy, um, but uh, it's going to be very cold. Um, temperatures are dropping like a rock here in the Midlands of South Carolina right now, but we're going to talk about that. We're also going to take a look and a peek on something I'm watching for late next week. We're not going to get super detailed with it, but there's an area of concern. I wouldn't even call it a concern, but it's a time frame to watch for severe weather as we get into late next week, um, this is we're getting into April. April's the most common month for severe weather uh, for areas of the mid south and the south. Um, obviously, when you get into May, there's still a threat. But as you get into June, July, the jet stream on average begins to shift north, and the basically uh, severe weather threats begin to shift more and more north. So that's how that kind of works out in a nutshell. So, so we're gonna uh, break all that down. Um, uh, definitely consider subscribing if you haven't. It's, it's a great way to support me. Like like the video and thank you all for the continued support. So let's get going with here. So check it out here. These are all in the purplish, kind of weird purplish colors. This is all freeze warnings. So uh, you have a huge area of freeze warnings. Um, and this is basically areas that are definitely going to get below freezing. And this is a huge area from North Carolina, South Carolina, just, just areas of the deep south under freeze warnings. So I uh, need to watch out. Uh, definitely put coverings over uh, plants that are sensitive to cold temperatures. And this is definitely going to be a deep freeze. So this is basically temperature anomalies. This is uh, temperatures compared to average. So we get this cold front that has done sweep through. And as we get into tomorrow, look at the really uh, colder colors, the blues, the purples, the pinks. This is colder than average uh, temperatures, basically over. This is well below. This is you know, 12 to 16 degrees below normal for areas of the southeast, the eastern U.S., um, and it stays kind of over the area through the first half of the weekend, but it still stays chilly, but we begin to moderate as we get into late weekend. I think Sunday will be a nice day for everybody temperature-wise. We start to kind of lose that chill, winter, late winter's chill, and look as we get into late week, we start to get well below average as we get to mid to late next week. We start to get above average temperature-wise here in the eastern U.S., um, as far as how cold we're going to get, this is just the NAM. There's many other models, but this is getting into overnight. Check out the cold temperatures. Um, I think areas, the freezing temperatures will extend all the way down into here for sure, especially the kind of the country rural areas that the temperatures always seem to get two to three to four degrees colder. But I expect um, widespread 20s and 30s all the way deep into the south. So definitely, I don't think it's going to be a, I wouldn't say one of those kind of freezes that cost um, farmers, you know, thousands of thousands of dollars. I don't think it's going to be anything like that, but um, you definitely need to watch out because this is this is it's going to it's not just going to barely nip freezing for areas like Columbia, Atlanta, Birmingham. I think it's going to get a few degrees below freezing and definitely into the Piedmont of North Carolina. And you know, these areas in the Northeast and Mid Atlantic, they're still used to kind of uh, freezing temperatures this time of the year occasionally, so they're not totally. Um, unprepared for this, but the southern areas need to watch. It's going to be downright chilly. Then we get into Friday, and I think Friday will be our, probably our coldest day for as far as high temperatures. I think temperatures will struggle to get out the low 50s for areas of the deep south, like Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Some areas in the mid-Atlantic might get locked into the 40s, and it's going to be a downright cold day. And uh, a lot of models are showing the NAM really isn't that Saturday morning is going to be colder than tomorrow morning. So we need to watch out. I think this could be the colder morning as the high pressure is starting to get over here and it's funneling in more deeper cold air before it goes on and gets on out of here and we can get rid of this chill. Um, but something I want to show you, um, it's nothing to stress about, nothing to worry about it at this time. But as we get into the late next week, this is CAPE. This is Convective Available Energy. Um, you notice you get CAPE values that start to build along the Gulf. And this already has that look to it that you're going to start to have um, uh, definitely some energy for thunderstorms. 
Uh, this is storm fuel. Basically, this is a dynamic thermodynamic for severe thunderstorm develop, development. So we need to watch this. This is getting into Thursday of next week. So this is actually a week out. But, you know, it's, it's not... I wouldn't say it's a bad thing to look this far out. Nothing to sound a horn or alarm about. But we need to watch out as we're getting into late next week for the next severe weather event across the south. Um, and as we're going here, it begins to shift a little bit more east, like they always do, from west to east. And uh, that's, a, that's a lot of cape. That's uh, 2,000 to 3,000 in certain areas. But how it's going to be positioned, how how this trough is going to dig, what what is digging, where the low pressure position is going to be, we don't know any of those kind of details. Here's basically, I'm just showing you the Bureau, and here's the system right here. It just shows green. just shows you some kind of system right here. The GFS and the Euro is different with timing, but it's just showing. This is, and honestly, this is probably going to be their next system that delivers moisture in general for certain areas. From now until late next week, a lot of areas in the south, uh, even in the eastern U.S. in general, the mid-Atlantic, Ohio Valley, might not see really any moisture after we get rid of this system probably until late next week. So we're going to get several days of dry um, dry weather across the eastern U.S., but this will be a storm to watch. Um, I'll show you this really quick. Um, this is basically the K index off weather models. This is basically showing um, highlighted areas where thunderstorm develop can occur and, and you know, um, look here, you know, it's it's highlighted. Getting, it's it Basically, this is showing it's going to get active in the eastern U.S. late next week. So it's a time frame to watch. Um, for sure, some something's going to be going on, I think, late next week. It might not be severe weather. I don't know. But another thing you can look at this far out is dew points. Check out as you begin to lose that uh, them really dry dew points across the southeast and southern U.S., you get a moist sector that kind of builds, and it's showing it this far out. So you're getting a surge in high dew points in the 60s and near 70. So that's a component you need for severe weather for tornado outbreaks. So we have to watch this area. It's a moist sector, but this is really far out, guys. This is um really, really far out. So you can't you can't really sit here and get super detailed about something. Um I would say if it's if it's starting to hold on to this look as we get into the tail end of this weekend, then we need to start to talk about it more in depth. But right now, um it's really just something that we need to watch. I think it'll be our next weather maker, not necessarily severe weather outbreak, but I think there's something here that we need to watch. You got high dew points, you got cape showing, you got shear showing, and you have some kind of moisture showing. And um, the way it's showing, it definitely looks a little different than the last severe weather event. So we need to continue to watch this. Um, but for now, check it out. Freeze warnings across a huge area. It's getting below freezing for a lot of people tonight. And just because you're not in a freeze warning in this area, trust me, there's no freeze warnings for these areas because it's just, it's not, it's not the time of the year where, uh, it's not uncommon to get freezes up here. So they don't put a warning for something that's not really uncommon. So in a nutshell, but that's all I got guys. Thank y'all for tuning in. Y'all have a great evening.